Today I'm going to be taking a look at a Gentoo based distribution called Clover OS GNU slash Linux. Clover OS is designed to be easy to use and out of the box. Um, I've had viewers request this in the last few weeks. I don't really know anything about Clover OS. I'm not really sure what I'm getting into. It's not listed on DistroWatch. It is on DistroWatch's waiting list, but it's not one of the official uh, 300 and something Linux distros that are listed on the DistroWatch uh, page hit rankings. So let me go ahead and pull down an ISO and let's take a look at Clover OS GNU slash Linux. So Clover OS GNU slash Linux. It is a performance tuned minimal Gen 2 Linux installation intended to be easy to use out of the box. Packages are built with OFAST, LTO, Graphite when possible. It uses LVM, actually LVWM. Okay, the LVWM window manager. That's interesting. Uh, that's really an obscure window manager. Matter of fact, that was the very first obscure window manager as part of my obscure window manager project, FVWM. Uh, I was kind of mixed on how I felt about FVWM, but it's an interesting window manager. Uh, it also has a DHCP CD for networking. A WPA supplicant by default gives you the option to install and load any desktop environment or window manager on boot via the dot bash profile, systemd, pulse audio, systemd and pulse audio are not included. So I guess they're anti systemd and pulse audio, anti Lenart pottering. Uh, why Clover OS? Clover OS is as default as possible as far as a Gen 2 install with all configuration done in slash etsy slash portage slash make.conf and the user's home folder. So they've already got this make.config file uh, squared away for you. It says also the user's home folder has some configuration stuff in it. Maybe it's some shell scripts or something. I'm not exactly sure, but it's supposed to be a really fast, really easy install. The real bare bones Gen 2 system once you're done though, but that's fine. I'm gonna uh, pick a mirror here and I'm gonna download the ISO. See the ISO, what size is the ISO? 1.0 gigs in size. Uh, I'm gonna install this today inside VirtualBox. All right, so I've created a virtual machine here, a uh, really small screen resolution for this thing here, uh, at least in the boot menu, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you guys uh boot menu we have the option of booting directly into gen 2 or gen 2 nofb we have mem test boot from first hard disk boot from second hard disk uh we just need to choose the first option boot gen 2 it should uh get us into uh some live environment of some kind i would assume uh at f first though we do need to Select a key map, so what keyboard are we using? I'm using a US keyboard, so 41 was the number I needed to type. And let's see what happens here. Like it's gonna auto log us in here. Okay, this is our live desktop environment. It automatically launches a, a terminal and it's uh, running, I guess, some kind of installer. Do we want to do automatic partitioning or manual partitioning? Let's do the automatic partitioning. Let's see what happens. Enter drive for Clover OS installation. It wants to do slash dev slash SDA, which is fine. Got one virtual drive in this virtual machine. Uh, should we do slash dev slash SDA one? Uh, drive slash dev slash SDA one partitions. Uh, okay, so no. Let me go back. I needed to do slash dev slash SDA. That's all I need. So enter drive for Clover OS installation slash dev slash SDA. Hit enter. Now the partition is going to be slash dev slash SDA one. That's correct. Hit hit yes. Enter our preferred root password. Now. Is it going to mask my password or are you guys going to see it? Okay, so you guys get to actually see my root password, my super secure password that I always use in my VMs. I hate to have to show this to you, but my password is DT for the root user. Now we need to enter my home username, DT. We need to enter the username for the username DT's password. 
We'll use DT. Is that correct? Y for yes. I really hate showing you my super secure password on screen. The Clover OS devs need to uh, change that. It should not show that uh, in the terminal. It should, uh, it should mask that password. Anyway, I'm not sure how long this is going to take. It says it's unsquashing the file system using two processors. I gave this virtual machine two cores of my six-core CPU. Yeah, it looks like this is going to take a minute. I'm at 15%. Yeah, 15%. Yeah, 16%. Okay, I'm going to pause the video for a few minutes while this part of the installation continues. Okay, so it, it completed that in about three minutes, and then it automatically rebooted the machine on me. So uh, it took about two minutes, though, to run that unsquash file system. Uh, so I don't know. If that was the installation or not, that was if that was the installation, that was a very fast installation. But I do know this is supposed to be a really, really base into install. There's not much to it. So we do have to enter our key map again when we reboot. Oh, I didn't enter my key map in time. I hope the default key map is set to US since I didn't enter anything. I guess we'll see. The other thing I didn't do is I didn't detach the ISO from this VM when it automatically rebooted on me. I didn't have time. Okay, so I do need to detach the ISO and then reboot the machine. Give me just a second. Okay, so I detached the ISO from this virtual machine. This is the same as you guys, if you're installing this on physical hardware, unplugging the live USB stick after the install and on reboot. All right, and then it reboots and, you know, we get all this output here. And then, of course, we have our login. Remember, I created the user DT. The password was also DT. All right, and now we have window manager options. Why for default? The default is FEWM. We also have the options of i3, Awesome, OpenBox, Enlightenment, KDE, Mate, XFCE, LXDE, LXQ, Fluxbox, DWM, ICE, WM, and WindowMaker, and XMonad. Uh, you know what? Because I already have config files that I can quickly pull down from my GitLab page, OpenBox is good for me. So type O. For open box, then it says sudo emerge open box. Install now. Y for yes. Yep. So it's going to run sudo emerge open box, which is the uh, emerge command to install open box in Gen 2 and Gen 2 based distros. Open box is basically one package, no dependencies. That's why I really love open box as far as a window manager. Very light, very fast. Uh, now, very minimal. You know, there's not a lot to it. I'm going to have to install some other stuff along the way to, to get a proper open box session up and running. But we'll deal with it for now. Now, it looked like it was trying to load us into a desktop environment. But you know what? I, I might have messed things up playing with the screen resolution. I bet I am in open box now. This black screen, though, is... Yeah, I probably shouldn't have played with the screen resolution. Let's see if I can get to maybe a different TTY. Okay, failed to open the display from the display environment variable. None of the other TTYs work. I have to keep coming back to this one. Okay. You know what, I think before I do anything, such as installing OpenBox, the ISO, this ISO was from June, it is late July. I probably should do some updates here, so. Uh, so I'm gonna pull up uh, another page here. This is getgood.io, get good, come on kids. Uh, uh, I guess this is a, some kind of a Git repository. Anyway, they host, uh, I guess, some of their sh shell scripts and stuff here for Clover OS. Anyway, it suggests uh, upgrading the system after installation. That's something I should have done. So first thing we need to do is uh, sudo emerge dash dash sync. So sudo emerge space dash dash sync to sync the repos. This may take a second. I'm going to pause the video.
All right, so that sudo emerge dash dash sync command took several minutes to complete. Now that we've synced the repos, let's go ahead and emerge world. So sudo emerge space dash under uh, lowercase u, lowercase a, lowercase v, capital D space world. And we're calculating the, the dependencies. And basically what this is going to do is this is going to update the packages on our system. Uh, calculating dependencies, none. Okay, well, that was nice that we didn't have to do anything there. Again, this is a very bare bones system, though. They're probably, you know, just it's not enough installed to, to have like a big update. Anyway, we also need to do a dependency clean. Pseudo emerge space dash dash depth clean. Not sure how long this will take. Uh, not very long. Uh, Alright, packages installed. There's 535 packages installed. Packages in world, 43. Packages in system, 44. Required packages, 535. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reboot this machine. Pseudo reboot. Let's see how things work now that we've updated the machine. Of course, there were no updates. Uh, I waited all that time for the sync and then I did the uh, world up update. There was nothing to update. So anyway, well again, again. All right, we have the option of various window managers and desktop environments. I'm going to choose OpenBox again. It didn't have to install OpenBox this time since we had already installed it before. And this time I actually do have a screen, uh, not a black screen. I actually have the wallpaper. By the way, this wallpaper. Is, I mean, the desktop does extend all the way into the black areas. The wallpaper doesn't, for some reason, doesn't take up the whole screen. But anyway, we have OpenBox. Uh, see, terminals out of the box. We have RxVT. You know, actually, uh, we don't have any of these installed except, I think, by default, Clover OS does ship with RxVT. I think that is that default terminal that we saw during the installer. You remember a terminal window popped up? That's URxVT. The rest of this stuff. Under terminals, GNOME terminal, XFCE, console, of course, none of that's going to be there. Xterm, even. Yeah, Xterm is not installed. So we really don't have anything yet. All I have is the OpenBox window manager. So, you know, to get a proper OpenBox session up and running, what I would need to do is sudo, go ahead and sudo emerge, and then all the programs I would need to, to get this OpenBox session up and running. Uh, I'm eventually going to need, of course, some kind of file manager, PC man, FM. I'll need a text editor of some kind. Uh, I like Genie for a text editor slash IDE. Genie's very nice. I will need a panel or a dock. Tent2 is my go-to when I use OpenBox. I need the OB config manager, obconf, to uh, change OpenBox themes and whatnot. I need LX appearance to change our GTK themes. Um, See what other programs do I know I'm going to need along the way. Nitrogen to change our wallpaper. That's a good one to have. Um, I, I think I can live with just those for now. I'm going to sudo emerge PC man FM genie tent to OB comp LX appearance and nitrogen. Once I get those handful of programs installed, then I can pretty much have a normal open box session up and running. I still won't have very many programs installed, uh, no full suite of programs, you know. I would, for me, if I was actually gonna live in something like Clover OS, I would have to in install things like OBS, Caden Live, GIMP, Audacity. I would have to uh, install, you know, some kind of Office suite, uh, and various other programs. Anyway, it's gonna install, looks like 29 packages. This is gonna take a few minutes. I'm gonna pause the video again. Okay, so we finished installing those programs. You know, once I started that, I realized I didn't install a web browser, but they probably do have a web browser installed by default. Uh, of course, in my open box menu, this is the default open box menu. This is pre-populated. You may or may not have most of these programs installed on your system. For a real bare bones system like Clover OS, you may not have any of these browsers installed by default. Uh, Firefox might be. Let me click on Firefox. Yes, so... It did install Firefox for us by default, so that's nice.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my GitLab page. So gitlab.com slash DWT1, I believe is the address to my GitLab page. Yep, here's my GitLab page. I'm going to go to my personal projects. I'm going to go to my dot files. And I'm going to download my dot files. Download it as a zip. Which I hope we have something to unzip files with. I'll find out in a minute. If not, I'll install XArchiver. I'm also going to uh, go to my repo here called DT Dark Theme. This is my dark GTK theme that I like using for OpenBox. I'm going to download that. Also includes uh, my OpenBox theme, I believe. Yeah, OpenBox 3 theme that I like to use. All right, so I downloaded those. Now I installed PC Man FM with a merge. So let me open up PC Man FM. I'm going to go to my downloads. All right, X Archiver is installed. Can I extract here? Yes. So that extracted the dot files. Let me extract my DT dark theme. Very cool. And all right. Uh, let's see. In my dot files, well, where are all the programs that should be in dot files? Most of them are hidden files, of course. That's why they're called dot files. They start with a period. By default, PC Man FM does not show hidden files, so I need to go to View, click Show Hidden, and there's everything. I'm going to go to dot .config, and I need this Tent2 folder. I need this OpenBox folder. That's really all I need. And I need to open up a new window. Home, I'm going to go to config and I'm going to paste my tent2 folder and my openbox folder here. I reconfigure openbox. Yeah, there's my menu with all the programs I used to run in openbox. All right, so, and it probably even has all my uh, configurations. Yes, and my key bindings now work that I'm used to. Very cool. So that is pretty much my open box. Uh, the only thing is the theme. It's not quite right. So let me go back to my downloads folder here where I downloaded my DT Dark theme, DT Dark theme master. All right, so what I need to do is I need to open up PC Man FM, but I need to open it up as sudo, sudo PC Man FM. I could copy these files using terminal commands, but I'm just going to show you guys in the GUI file manager. So slash user share themes. I'm going to copy DT dark theme over here. And that is all I need to do, I think. Close out PC Man FM. Let me open up LX Appearance. Now that I have my menu working, I think I have LX Appearance. Yep, here. Now I choose DT dark theme. There is my GTK theme. Hit apply. That'll work. Now I also need to do the OB configuration, OB comp, OB open box config right there. And I need to choose the open box theme called DT dark theme. It's in here somewhere. Yep, DT dark theme master. And now, there we go. And if I launched uh, Tent 2, how would tent 2 look right now? There is my tent 2. Of course, I could set a wallpaper with nitrogen. I don't have any other wallpapers to choose on this system because I don't have any wallpaper packs. I haven't imported any wallpapers. But very quickly, I could get a proper open box session up and running here in Clover OS, and I would have basically Gen 2 with open box. Um, so pretty cool, actually, considering this did not take any time at all. The, that very first initial installation that I ran through was like two minutes, three minutes at most when I rebooted the machine and it was asking me what window manager to choose and I hit O for open box and because I chose open box, which is one package, one program, no dependencies. I mean, I was in open box, you know, five minutes after I downloaded the ISO. Uh, and, you know, it took a, several minutes for me to do that emerge sync and then update uh, emerge world but had i not had to do that i mean this was less than a five minute install and for somebody like me who has all my dot files my config files for openbox or qtile or xmonet or whatever on my gitlab page 
Uh, I pick whatever minimal window manager I want to use. I pull down my old configs from GitLab and I'm up and running in minutes. Uh, it's scary how fast this is for an install. I mean, this is scary fast for like a, a Debian or an Arch install. The fact that this is a Gen 2 based system, I'll be honest, it, it's pretty amazing. Uh, is this something you know I would consider using? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I have no idea who makes this product. Uh, as far as Clover OS, how many devs are behind it? It may just be a one-man development team behind it. Uh, it's not. It's not officially listed on DistroWatch. It's on their waiting list. So, oh, uh, DistroWatch does not even really track Clover OS. They don't have you know a, a page where DistroWatch is uh, you know tracking their page hit rankings or anything like that. So it's really not a well-known distro at all. Who knows if it's got any uh, staying power, any longevity. But it is an interesting project. And you know what? If, uh, if they continue to do releases and such, I will continue to take a look at it on the channel. It is a very interesting, interesting project. Um, I'm glad I took a look at it. Before I go, I do need to give a special thanks to my patrons, all my Patreon supporters. Ansem, David, Carlos, Chuck, Daniel, Brian, Leo, A.K. Ron, Mr. Neely, Pops, Bart, Robert, Marcus, Dan, Mr. Smarty Pants, Swami, Ben, Hume, Keith, Dan, Mr. GFY, Michael, Tony, Bruno, David, Silvio, Omar, John, Carl, Greg, Christian, Rob, Matt, Mark, Tiedemann, First Stephen, Second Stephen, Third Stephen, Eduardo, Alex, Jake, Benjamin, Marcus, Interceptor, First Paul, Second Paul, Alan, Katrina, John, and Tubella. You guys rock. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys. Thank you.